Welcome back to Can It Be a Mead? We're in episode number six. I have made five other meads based off of this game, and here we are for episode number six. So the way this works is I have two different wheels that I spin, and the wheels decide the ingredients. I have to take the ingredients and make that into a mead. If you want to see the other five I've done, go check them out. They're on the channel, of course. So let's go ahead and get started with wheel number one. This one has a bunch of fruits. I choose two, um, some rather interesting things on it. So let me go ahead and spin it. Our first ingredient is going to be, let's see, orange. Okay, haven't had this yet, orange. Um, now let's find out what our second ingredient is gonna be. All right, our second ingredient is going to be, this one has a bunch of wild flavors on it. We have orange, and our second one is nutmeg. What? Oh man, I don't know about this. Orange and nutmeg, maybe? I don't know. Uh, I don't have a plan yet, obviously, but I know that those two flavors are gonna have to go together. So what I'm gonna do from here is I'm gonna go ahead and go buy some ingredients. I'll formulate a plan and we'll make this mead. So let's go buy some ingredients. All right, we're back and we're ready to make this mead. Let me tell you my recipe I'm using. I'm gonna use a full gallon of water. I'm gonna use this two uh, gallon bucket for the primary. Full gallon of water, two pounds of this pure and simple honey, and then uh, a, I mean, this is basically five grams of uh, Red Star Premier Cubay yeast. Now this one, when I did my big yeast test, did a pretty good job of retaining um, honey character, and it was a slower ferment, but it did a good job in general of keeping the most important thing in a mead. In the secondary, after all of that is the primary, in the secondary, we are going to take and put in about, I mean, this is, how much is this? Oh, three quarters of a pound of um, orange juice concentrate, roughly about that much, depending on how much flavor we need for our orange flavor, and then some ground nutmeg. I'm very tempted to go ahead and probably stabilize after the primary to retain a lot of the sugars from the orange juice, but we'll see when we get there. So that's my recipe. Let's go and mix some stuff up and then we'll talk. All right, this is all mixed up now. We have our gallon of water, two pounds of this honey. Our original gravity that I just took is 1.062, which means we are roughly setting around, I believe, a eight and a half to 9% range. I could be wrong. I'll put it right there. This thing now needs its yeast. Like I said, using the uh, Red Star Premier Cuvée. This is a packet that I had used from a while ago, or not a while ago, but I did some testing with. I'm just gonna use all of it for this time because I don't have any use for the rest of it. So might as well use it. I could have rehydrated. I didn't want to this case. Everything was sanitized, is sanitized of course. This is sanitized uh, water, I use star sand, all of those things. Bucket was sanitized. Make sure to sanitize your stuff. So um, the reason I'm putting the orange juice in the secondary is because the primary is where a lot of the important flavors are blown off. So we don't wanna lose the important um, orange aroma, which is orange taste. Now the other side of this is uh, I am using this bucket because ultimately we are going to be um, aging in this glass carboy or a glass carboy. I can go over one gallon in this bucket. So when I rack over after the primary and inevitably use, uh, lose some to sediment, um, I'll, I'll still end up with one gallon. So I don't know how long this will take to ferment, but we're gonna come back after the primary and then start to add the rest of our stuff. So throwing my lid on, throwing my airlock on, put my ingredients down, and here we go. And we're back after the primary fermentation. This thing with some difficulty, not because of anything I did wrong, but because of um, a situation at my house and losing power, took about two weeks longer to ferment because the temperature dropped. So this thing took roughly uh, about a month to complete. It should have been done in about three or maybe two and a half. Anyways, I know it's completed because the current gravity is 1.000. We started at 1.062, currently at 1.000. Let's taste test it. Um, you can kind of see it's a little bit clear. It's definitely uh, not the clearest thing right now. It's got some yeastiness to it. Uh, it's definitely very young. A month is not a long time for a mead. 
the honey warmth is there though. The character of this, of that um, honey is, is present, which is nice. I definitely think it will need to be back sweetened, but I know that will partially happen with the orange juice and we're using orange juice concentrate. Here's my plan. I'm actually gonna continue to ferment in the bucket because this is currently over one gallon, which is nice. I wanna mix everything in the bucket and ferment for the next basically two weeks while we orange juice it um, in here. And then I'll lose some of the sediment, then rack it into a carboy. So I am going to add to taste roughly as much orange juice as I feel that I need to make this taste as orangey as I want. Yes, I'm adding this in the secondary fermentation, so there will be re-fermentation, which is okay. I could stabilize this thing and then add this, but I don't wanna do that. I'm okay with there being some re-fermentation on this orange juice. So let me add all of my orange juice. All right, I have mixed in 12 ounces of the orange juice concentrate. Let me tell you what it, let me tell you what it tastes like. Definitely still yeasty, of course. Same flavors we get, but we have a very prominent orange juice flavor. 12 ounces is a lot for this, but I do know after the secondary, we're gonna lose a little bit of the aromatic side, and that also means we lose some of the taste side of the orange juice. I think it'll even out. Now, the new gravity for this thing, after adding the orange juice concentrate is actually one point um, zero one zero. We've added one point of gravity, meaning our total possible ABV is somewhere in the range of like 9.4-ish um, percent after this ferments, which the yeast will definitely ferment through that last point of gravity, especially since they're still in there. Let's go ahead and let them do that. I'll write down that I've changed some numbers and then after the secondary, we will rack this off, stabilize it, add some honey, and do our nutmeg addition. So let's go to that. Okay, and we're back. It's been about two weeks since we did anything with this. The secondary fermentation has occurred because the orange juice, um, when we added it, added, well, I'll put it this way. We were at 1.010 gravity. We're currently at 1.000 after the orange juice. Let's taste test it. Ooh, yeah, well, it's got some bite. Um, fermented orange juice does have a weird taste sometimes. If you think about if you were to like brush your teeth and then drink some orange juice, you kind of get that flavor sometimes. Yeah, it's gonna need um, taste. It needs some sweetness. It's got the orange flavor, but it's like the orange without the sweet, which don't normally go together. Here's what I wanna do. I am gonna pour this back in here. We are gonna take, oh, I just stirred up the lees. Oh, I shouldn't have done that. Oh well. So we're gonna take this and um, actually rack it into a new container and then we'll talk about the next step. Okay, this is racked into a new container. We lost a little bit of mead. Really not that much though, considering um, how much, you know, leftover stuff there was from the orange juice. So um, I did get a little bit of it into here. As you can tell, it's, it's a little hazy. Um, that's just kind of how it is. So my next step, I want to stabilize this. I'm using potassium sorbate. It's a stabilizer. Some people don't like using this. You have alternatives like pasteurizing um, that you can do instead of adding a chemical. But I, I just want to stabilize this because I am going to end up back sweetening it first with some more honey and then adding the nutmeg. I, I was thinking about doing it in reverse, but I think that I want to, I don't want the sweetness to overshadow the nutmeg addition. So I think if I add the nutmeg later, I can help pronounce that more. So I need one half, oop, wrong thing. One half tablespoon for this gallon. Now the yeast, let's see if they freak out. Generally, they don't like sorbet because it's creating a hostile environment for them to live in. So. We are going to now put this away for at least 24 hours, maybe if not more, to age, to hopefully, you know, have some of the stuff settle at the bottom. I might re-rack it again so we can get it to be a little more clear, and then we'll come back and do some more with this.
Okay, to save some time because I did a lot with this mead, here's what I've done. I back sweetened a lot. I used four ounces of coffee blossom honey initially because it's roasty. I thought it'd pair well and I added my nutmeg. Tasted it. Still wasn't sweet enough. So I went ahead and added even more honey. I added three ounces here. After that, it was getting closer to the sweetness level, but it wasn't quite there, so I decided to oak it. Now I'm putting a Spanish oak spiral on, or in this mead, to let it age for a little while. This will add some tannic value and some extra flavor profile to it that I think could contrast and go well with the orange and nutmeg. So this sat for a number of weeks, I believe it's four weeks, and came back and it was still not sweet enough. So guess what? I added even more honey. I added a whole pound of clover honey, and grand total, I've added 1.5 pounds of honey to this thing to back sweeten. The current gravity of it, or final gravity, is 1.040, which is super sweet. Now, we're gonna bring a friend over to taste test it and see what they think. All right, here we are. I have my friend Chaz here to help me with this episode of Can It Be a Mead? He knows roughly what's happening here. Yeah. But I'll explain again. This is an orange and nutmeg mead. Okay. And I used orange juice and actual nutmeg uh, grinding. Well, I didn't do the grinding. I just did powder. Uh, powder. Nutmeg, so oh, I kind okay. of cheated. But this huh. has been quite the process. I will forewarn, forewarn you. This is a very sweet mead. What, um, so you've tried it before. You. I have. Yes. Uh, the whole, well, the whole point of the so series. You're, so is, you're beating me to it, huh? Well, <laughs> well, I'm saying that um, the whole series is me trying to to make it better and better till I feel like it's at the point okay. where it's palpable. So we'll find out today if it's palpable. Perfect. So let me go and pour it for us. It's not super clear. I kind of. I did not honestly try very hard to make it clear, so I mean, a little hazy. There's nothing wrong with that. So uh, I just want you to taste it. Let me know what you think. Um, right. And this is again, this is for my version of an orange and nutmeg mead. Okay. I would not say that I, if someone else can do this and probably. Did you follow a recipe or did you uh, just go off the off the cuff? Off the cuff, totally off the cuff. Oh, uh, so you get there's a lot of sweetness that I get from the just the uh -huh. overall smell. Oh, that's good. It's, it's, um, Ooh, that, that orange. So you get the sweetness and then the orange comes in, like yeah. really knocks you. And then it finishes with this, like the nuttiness of the nutmeg. Mm -hmm. Like it just like smooths it all out. That's delicious. The more I've used nutmeg, the harder or not harder, the weirder I find it to be like it, I can, it's not a super strong flavor flavor, but it has a nice mm -hmm. aroma to me. Yeah. Like I don't get a ton on the palate, but I get it more on the nose. See, I think I'm the other way around. Really? I think I get way more of it on the, the palate than I do on the nose. I get the orange, I get the citrus, yeah. I get all of that in the nose, uh -huh. but in the in the taste at the very end is where I get the nut, Yeah. the nutmeg. I, I don't get it at all in the smell. Yeah, yeah so um, I actually just finished this recently. Ah, I just love the way that bites. Yeah. It's got a wheel, it's got a, because of all the acidity from the orange juice mm -hmm. probably, it's got this nice like bite at the beginning. Mm -hmm. And then it like smooths out into a nice sweetness. Oh man, that's good. Now I could drink this all, right. all day long. Well, it's funny about this to me. The reason I say it's really sweet, the um, mead we had just tried a moment ago, it ended at 1020, 1.020. Yeah. This ended at 1.040, which is roughly double the sweetness of what you we had before. So the, double the sweetness, but half of the alcohol content. No, it's the same. Well, right. this one is like this is like a, a eight percent mead. Um, okay, so it's a little bit less. It's lighter. Than, yeah. The thing you don't get or you don't the reason you don't feel so much sweetness is because of the acidity from the, the orange, orange juice, juice. it's yeah. like contrasting it well so it doesn't feel like you're just dipping into a spoonful of honey, honey yeah you got like a comparative uh, yeah it's, it's that bite that bite just like offsets all of the sweetness mm -hmm. for like two or three seconds so and then the sweetness is like uh ushered in yeah hmm. well all right so do you think this flavor combination Again, my rendition alone can be a mead. Absolutely. Oh, great. I love it. I think so, too. And my challenge to you, if you're watching this video, would be to go and make it yourself. Um, I think that's the most fun thing. You know, watch the whole process, but then maybe try to make this version or your own. See what you can do. It's a lot of fun. Switch so. it up. Do like a lemonade yeah. or, uh, or a grape juice. Yeah. Grape I think fruit. that there can be lots of different varietals and variations on this, but I've had a lot of fun. Chaz, thank you for helping me out. I yeah, appreciate course, you uh, taking your time. and. This Thank you. Yeah. So, Cheers. Thank you guys for watching. Cheers.